As Matt uh, and Helen said, my name's Nev. I'm one of the pastors at the church here. Um, and it's my privilege to be able to share God's word to you this morning after um, a three month break away. Uh, if you don't know, I've just had a sabbatical, which was very kind uh, of you as a church to release me to do that. And I'm very thankful. So thank you. Um, but it's great to be back. And I'm really enjoying being part of. Uh, church life here at Community Church Putney once again. Uh, I've only been back probably less than two weeks, but it feels like a bit longer, but uh, <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. Uh, there's a lot going on, but it's, it's, it's good. It's good to be here. Um, and uh, yeah, I think actually on that, I think, uh, you know, I've, I've actually, although it was nice to have some time out, I, I did realize I really missed being a part of uh, this body here, um, and that, that will kind of, it's kind of part of the point of what I'm going to be speaking on this morning, we're, we're looking at the topic of together uh, as part of our mission, so we're going to be looking at John chapter 15, um, so if you want to follow along, that's where we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be reading from the NIV today, um, and uh, yes, we're in a three-week vision series, as Matt said. So our vision, if you don't know, it, simply put, is we're a church that desires to bring people to Jesus, and in three ways, myself, one another, and our community. So last week, Matt spoke on uh, the first part, myself. So if you missed that, I'd encourage you to go on our website, listen to our podcast from last week, catch up. But today is going to be more of a focus on one another. So that's us. How do we bring one another to Jesus? And I would encourage you this morning, if you have a way of taking notes, whether that's an old school pen and paper or whether it's on, a, on your phone or something, I'd encourage you to have some note-taking facility ready if that's the kind of thing you do. Even if it's just one little thing that jumps out to you and you just write that one thing down, I find it can be helpful just to help us engage and also to be expectant. What does God want to say to me this morning? What does God want to specifically highlight to you, I wonder, this morning? So be open to that. Um, yes, but uh, yeah, I was just thinking uh, back as I was preparing and I was thinking when I was um, uh, around 15, 16 years old, I got involved with uh, my church worship band um, so I was uh, asked, actually, by one of the worship leaders, Can you, do you think you could learn the drums? They obviously needed a drummer, and he saw something in me, I don't know how. So I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And I, I, want, I actually always liked the drums, so I learned, got involved with the band, started playing the drums. And um, it was a wonderful time. Uh, this is in my old church in southeast London. And uh, by being part of that... Um, I always look back on it and see that now as really formative in my own life in terms of shaping me and my uh, walk of faith and who I am as a Christian. I realized that uh, as I look back, I was really um, guided and shepherded and loved by that worship team. So I was in a team of like a, a whole bunch of adults, really. Um, but what happened through that was not only did I spend time with these people learning and having rehearsals in the week, um, there was, a, you know, there was a, a family that opened their home to me and said, come over, we'll rehearse some of the songs for Sunday, and then we'll have lunch and stuff like that. So it was little things like that, that it was more than just let's learn some songs. I really got drawn into the sense of church life and family life, and, um, and uh, I, was, I was loved by this, uh, this group of people, and, um, and that caused me to kind of as we're looking at today, we're talking about being in the vine, remaining in the vine. I, I believe that that really helped me to stay in the vine and really pursue um, my walk with God. And, and actually, now, years later, I look back and I think, well, do you know what? Not only was I helped through that by being with others, but actually, I realized that actually I would have had an impact on others by being there. I wouldn't have thought that at the time, but me being there would have encouraged others, me being involved, a, a younger guy coming in and saying, yeah, I want to I wanna live for Jesus and I want to serve him with the gifts that he's given me. And I think that would have blessed um, and encouraged those that were older than me. And I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, it's wonderful to see our young people getting involved in that way. Um, but, uh, you know, I wonder what your experience is of being loved, of receiving the love of others, because I'm sure we've all experienced it in some degree, being loved by other people, but also 
Um, you know, maybe you've experienced the opposite. Maybe you've been through times where you're feeling like, I'm, I'm not feeling like I'm, I'm being loved. Um, or maybe you've, you've got experience of being loved. Maybe you've got experience of how you've shown love to others. Well, in the passage we're going to look at today, um, we're going to hear the words of Jesus and how he points to this being something of primary importance, that we are to love one another. And in a nutshell, how do we best do that? Well, it's, as we've just outlined in the vision there, it's uh, by bringing one another to Jesus. The best way I can love you as my brother or sister in Christ is to bring you to Jesus, to keep helping point you to Jesus. And um, this is something that we can really only effectively do by being together. That's probably why um, our, that whole season of lockdown was hard, because we were not physically together. And I thank God for technology. We were able to, in some way, through Zoom and all things like that, kind of be together. But there's something about physically being present together. We're in the room right now together. And as we are, God does wonderful things in and through us. So we're going to read through, um, actually, the second half of the passage. So we're looking at John 15. And I'm just going to read 8 to 17 this morning. We're going to think particularly about that section. But let me just, let me just pray and then we'll read through it. So, Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that your word brings life. And, Father God, this morning, I open myself again to you, to your word. I, I stand here, Lord. I, I want you to teach me. I want you to teach us all through your living word this morning. And I pray, Lord God, highlight important parts of this word to us as a church but as individuals within this church as well this morning we declare that you are lord of lords king of kings you are the one who sustains us you're the one that gives us true life you are the vine we are the branches and i thank you lord that we can abide in you and bear much fruit so encourage us this morning through your word i pray amen amen um so i've got a bit of a, a slightly Saw croaky throat because um, it was our daughter's birthday and uh, we had a party and I was helping to run it and you know it's like the kids and ah! so I'm just a uh, mm. but it could be alright. So we're going to read this um, John 15:8-17. If you've got it in front of you, I want to ask you every time I come to the word love or loved or command or commands. I want you to say that word with me as I get to it. So I'm reading it, but you join in with the word love or loved or command or commands. But if you're reading a different version, you might be on your own. (laughs) So NIV, that's where I'm going. Okay, so from verse 8. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command love each other. So as you can see, there's a lot of mention of love and commands there in those verses. In fact, uh, just in what we read, love is mentioned nine times, command five times in those ten verses. And we're going to get on to looking at the significance of that in just a moment. But just as a kind of recap of John 15 and that chapter as a whole, um, what is Jesus saying in this chapter. Well, he's saying that we are to remain in the vine, so we're to persist to 
keep going in him, i.e. in God, because Jesus is God. And as we do so, as we remain in him, the promise is that we will bear much fruit. And why do we bear much fruit? To bring God glory. That is why we bear fruit. We bring God glory. We glorify him and people see the beauty of God through us as we bear fruit. So, how do we remain in the vine? Well, today, we're going to specifically focus on how we remain in the vine together. We've looked a bit about how we do it individually last week, but as in terms of together, how do we remain in the vine? Well, we remain in the vine by being together and loving one another as Christ loved us. So that again, we remain in the vine by being together and loving one another as Christ loves or loves us. So um, when I, before I worked at the church uh, here, so I work here full time now, but before I did that, uh, I, I did various things. I freelanced. I, I, well, I don't know how I did what I did. I did all sorts of odd jobs and stuff, from being a children's entertainer to a storyteller to a um, media and communications type things. Um, but one of the jobs I did quite a lot was going around uh, primary school. So I used to drive a van around uh, delivering workshop, national curriculum workshops, dressed in character, turning up as a chimney sweep, that kind of thing, and pretending I'm a Victorian and telling the kids about that. It was great fun. But what was really interesting about that job was I got to every week visit like, um, you know, five or six different primary schools week after week. So I would go in, deliver my sessions, go. But I would often spend the day at each one. And so by being there, I got to get a glimpse of uh, what life was like in that particular school. And it was really interesting because I would do my sessions and then I would often go and have my lunch in the staff room. So I got to sit and observe what was the dynamic in that staff room, in that school. And what I found was that there were some schools I went to and there was not a good atmosphere. I would be there and you could just tell people weren't happy. The teachers were a bit miserable. Uh, then when I sit in the staff room, they were gossiping about one another, complaining about this, that, or the other. Um, now, I know it's hard, primary school life or teaching, um, but there were some that were more <laughs> like that than others, and I would really pick up on that just by observing. And also by being there, I, I would kind of go in and not really be welcomed by anyone and that kind of thing, but that was fine. I'd just get on with the job. But there, were, there were other... I mean, the majority of the schools were probably somewhere in the middle, so just... Okay, you know. And, but then there were other schools that I went to every now and then that were like exceptionally the opposite. They were like really, there was a great atmosphere. Like I remember going to one school and I walked in and I was just setting up my things in the morning as I did. And often teachers walk through and they're just in their own world, you know, getting ready for the day. But every teacher that came through the hall as I was setting up, they're like, oh, good morning, how are you? Oh, you can't, oh, welcome, yeah. Have you had a cup of tea? Has anyone brought you tea? Oh, let me get you a cup of tea. And, you know, I was like, this is great, you know, it's just what I want, a nice cup in the morning and a nice welcome. And I felt really welcomed there. And I thought, wow, what is it about this particular school that's different from the others? And what I discovered was that um, eventually I met someone who was really friendly, chatting to me. And then I discovered after chatting to them for a while that the person I was chatting to was the head teacher. And I kind of thought, ah, that makes sense. The head teacher set the tone for the school. A good head teacher will have a massive impact on the rest of the school. And so you could tell that everything they were displaying was being fed through to their staff, and their staff were there for. And you could tell this head teacher was probably the kind of person that really encouraged their staff, really built them up, and therefore the general atmosphere in that place was good. And even, like, I, would, I could tell, because when I was in the staff room at lunchtime, the atmosphere was good. Even when the, te the head teacher wasn't present, it wasn't like they were doing it to try and impress. They were just um, really good, caring for one another. And so, as we look at this uh, passage in verse 8 of chapter 15, Jesus says, This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to me... Uh, showing yourselves to be my disciples. And I really think, as I think about that image of that school, it's like um, the head uh, had a big impact on the rest of them, and therefore they, they bear much fruit. I could see the good fruit of that school through the way that they cared for one another, and they followed their teacher. And I wonder how we do in this regard, in terms of loving one another, 
In the first few chapters of Acts, the book of Acts, we read that the believers were all together in one place. Jesus left the believers. He, he ascended. He went to be with the Father. And the believers are there. But it says they remained together. They didn't disperse. They, they, they stayed together. They prayed. The Holy Spirit came upon them. And they devoted themselves to one another. It said they shared everything. They had all their possessions they shared. They met one another's needs. They, um, they devoted themselves to one another. They genuinely, dis- they genuinely displayed an authentic love for one another, which was exactly what Jesus wanted. Back a couple of chapters in John 13, 35, Jesus says this, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples. How? By uh, if you love one another. Jesus played su- placed such a high importance on this idea of love. God is love. This is the central theme to the gospel, the love of God. And that's why he's, he commands us, love one another. The head, as I said, in that school displayed such love and care for um, the staff. And that, that came through. Jesus is the head of the church. He is our head. If we remain in him, if we keep bringing ourselves to him, um, we will be able to love one another. See, we, we, without the head, like in that school, without a head... If everyone's just left to their own devices, they could try. They could be like, I'm going to be loving. And they might do okay for a season, but I don't think it will last. I think there's going to be things that are going to happen. You know, people, uh, it might become a bit fractious. People might go, well, I want to do this, I want to do that. But there's a head that was kind of keeping them together. And it's the same for us. If we try and go it alone, like, and say, I'm going to follow, I'm going to, I'm going to be a Christian, but actually we're, as an individual or as a church, we're not truly looking to Jesus ongoingly remaining in the vine then at some point there's going to be things that happen that's going to pull us apart Jesus keeps us united and there are occasions where churches can fracture can um, and it's sad when that happens but if we keep pursuing him if we keep looking to the head and saying yes Jesus we are going to remain in you then he will remain in us, the promises. His love will come through us, and we will be fruitful. We will bring glory to God, and we're to love one another, and that's a command, but we can't do that in our own strength. We are all sinful. We all have difficulties at at times where we're all different characters, personalities, different histories, walks of life, all that. So how does it work that such a diverse group of people like we have here can actually come together and love one another? Well, it's through Jesus. It's through him, first and foremost. He gives us what we need. The Holy Spirit gives us what we need to be able to love one another. So we must keep looking to him. So we bring ourselves to Jesus. We bring one another. And then, as we're going to look at next week, we're going to see how that impacts our community, those beyond us as a church here. So if you want to remain in the vine, what are you to do? What am I to do? As Jesus said in uh, verse 10 of this chapter, John 15, Jesus says, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. So to remain in the vine, we are to obey Jesus' commands. Yeah, And what are his commands? Well, he says it in verse 12. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. I mean, this is how he simply puts it. You know, when he's asked, um, read, uh, I think, in Matthew and, and uh, Luke, I think, he's asked, what the, what's the most important command? Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength. And the second is like it, love one another. On this, all, everything else remains. So, This is the most important thing Jesus is trying to get them to grasp. Love each other as I have loved you. We remain in the vine by loving one another as Christ loves us. So that's all very well, but then you might be thinking, yeah, but how do we actually do that? How do we actually love one another? It's all very well to say, let's do that. But how? How do we practically do it? Well, do you know what? It takes work to love one another. It does. It takes work in any context, in, this, in church life, in family life, in our marriages, 
whatever context, in our schools, like I've said, in our workplaces, it takes work. It doesn't just happen. I mentioned earlier about the love I experienced by my church worship team that I was invited into. And it had a big impact. But that took work. It didn't just happen. Someone had to actually invite me in. Someone had to actually uh, say, come on. And, and someone went beyond the meetings, went beyond, just come around, let's learn these songs, great, off you go. There were people who actually, like, now I'm going to go above and beyond that. I'm going to invite you around for lunch. I'm going to give you my time. I'm going to say, stay here. I mean, I was probably a bit annoying when I was younger because I, I, well, I still do have a massive appetite for food. And, um, and I would be like, yeah, I'll come for lunch. And then uh, I would then turn up. I will just turn up for lunch and I would invite myself around for lunch. But um, I think God knew that he, there was something in that. He, I think it's a gift. Now, now, just reflecting on it, a gift of being able to invite myself to lunch. I mean, honestly, maybe it is. Because we can be a bit too polite sometimes. We can be like, you know, like, oh, and no one's inviting me over. No one's drawing me in. So, uh, you know, maybe invite yourself. Okay? I mean, I might not be able to have you all around today for lunch, but um, do come and invite yourself over if you want. But hey, why not? I mean, we should be able to do that, right? For a family, you know, like with my brother, I might, like, I've got a couple of brothers and my mum, I might say, oh, what are you doing this weekend? Can I come over? Oh, you know, we do that, don't we, as a as kind of family. Well, we're family, so we should be able to do that. And actually, it does us good. Me inviting myself around to someone's house will bless me, but I'm sure it will bless them. <laughs> um, you know, I believe so. <laughs> But hey, let's have that attitude, shall we? Like, if I am going to go to someone's house, don't just think, how am I going to take, take, take? I want to hopefully come with, how am I going to be a blessing to them as well? Like, will I refresh them? And I'm sure we will. We had people over last night, and it was great. We loved it, and it's refreshing, and it's nice to just spend time with people with no particular agenda um, and eat nice pudding. Um, But... um, But yeah, how can you experience that here? You might be thinking, oh yeah, that's good. You were drawn into the worship team, but you might be thinking, well, I'm not musical at all, so I can't do that. No, but you could serve on a team in the church. There are lots of ways to get involved here on a Sunday morning. The the, um, PA team, the stewarding team, the kids team, the creche team, the refreshments team. There's loads of ways you can get involved on a Sunday. By getting involved in a team, you actually get to um, rub shoulders with people you wouldn't normally and spend that, that extra time when you come in early, you can... Talk about how your week's been whilst you're setting up. So that's one way. But I think one of the key ways um, that we can truly get a sense of loving one another experientially is through our community groups. And we've mentioned those already this morning. We have midweek groups. So we meet here on a Sunday as one. But then in the week, uh, various days and various evenings, or I think one meets on a Sunday afternoon even, we meet in smaller groups of around 10-ish And the idea of those is to really have a place where we can go deeper in God's word together. We can love one another through loving God's word together and actually going, hey, did you see this in God's word? No, I didn't. Wow, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, that really encourages me. I think that's for you. Yeah, it is for me. Thank you. You wouldn't get that on your own. We get to pray together. We get to share one another's burdens and needs. We love one another as we gather together. We pray, what's going on in your life? Well, this, this, and this. Let me pray for you. And that, again, like I said, it it takes work. It doesn't just happen. If you join a community group in the next couple of weeks and you're new to it, hopefully you're going to have a great time, but you might not immediately be like, I'm experiencing the great depths of what it means to be in a group. It takes time, weeks, months, maybe even years. But over time, if you truly gonna be, if you can truly open yourself and say, Yeah, I'm prepared to make myself vulnerable with this group of people for the next year or so, you can experience some wonderful things and you can experience what it is to remain in the vine together with one another. I wonder. Do you, are you part of a community group here at the church? Maybe you're new, and so this is new to you, so maybe you're not. Maybe you've been coming for a while, but for whatever reason, you just haven't got involved. I wonder if you could reconsider it again. 
maybe just make a decision today. Actually, yeah, I can see that this is important. I'm going to commit to joining a group, and I'm going to commit to going uh, every week to the midweek meeting for the next year or so, as much as I can. But it goes beyond that, doesn't it? Like I said, being a part of a community group is, has to be more than just a midweek gathering. We gather, it's great. We gather in one another's homes, we meet, we go over the Bible study, and we encourage one another through that. But that might be for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, depending on how long you like to hang around. Um, but that's only a short part of the week. But then the rest of the week, we might share in like a, a shared WhatsApp group, like prayer needs. But also, can we meet outside of that? Like maybe you... You meet with one or two from your group and you say, can we, can we meet up for coffee? Why don't we hang out? That's how you can go even deeper in this sense of being together, one another. We've talked in the past about something called running partners. We might not have mentioned it so much recently, but it's a great thing where you say, I'm going to decide, within the, even within this community group, one or two people I really connect with, we're going to decide to meet regularly just to go for a walk or um, so like, I, I still do that, uh, I meet with, um, well Graham, we meet, we need to catch up again, don't we? And we like to meet, get a Greg's, go for a walk. That's like, great for me, I love that, you know. Bit of a, a hot pastry and a coffee and a walk and a catch up. But it's wonderful, and it's great the way you can just share your life together in that way. But it, it takes work, someone's got to decide, are we going to do this? Yes, okay, let's put it in the diary. There's some practical elements involved in doing that. But if you're not in a community group, I just want to highlight again, how do you go about getting into one? Well, Connection Point is the starting point. Matt and Helen mentioned that. They run this regularly. So if you're new to the church, you can come to Connection Point on a Tuesday evening from 7.30, 7 for tea, uh, here or elsewhere, depending on where they uh, are meeting. It might be in their home. Um, have a bit of food. Find out about us as a church. It's a great way to find out who are we as a church, what do we believe, for a number of weeks. At the end of that process, you might then decide, yeah, I'm, I'm for this church. I want to join. I might want to become a member. And they'll tell you what that's about. And then we'll look to see, like, now, let's get you into a group. And we'll work out between a, a dialogue between you and us and everyone, where can you best be placed and where's going to really bless and serve you well. And we'll get you into a group. And then the group leaders will be ready to receive you and go, come in, join us. Our group, uh, it's exciting. It's also a bit of like, uh, there's mixed feelings because our group, Roehampton, we've we kind of grown to like about 14 plus people. And the ideal size of a community group is probably 10 at the most because although it's nice to be in a room of lo loads of us, there's something different about smallness as well in the sense that you can get a bit more intimacy and get more chance to share and all that kind of thing. So over the course of this year, we've talked about a plan to become two groups. So we're actually starting that in the next couple of weeks. So we're two groups of seven. Now, in some ways, that's sad because we're like, we don't want to be apart. And I still, even like every now and then, I'm like, should we do this? I don't want to do this. But the point is, if we don't do it, we're not making space for others to come in. And that's the whole point, is that we could become two groups of seven. We've now got three more spaces for people to join us. We want more people to be connected. And so that's what we're doing. We're opening ourselves up to more coming together. And actually, we're, these two groups, we're not going to be completely apart. We're still going to come together every now and then and have a celebration. So it's all good. And it's family. But it's like, it's like a biological family. You have your family, but at some point, the kids, they grow up and they, they, they have their own families. But you still gather together, don't you? And that's the same true of us as a church. We're part of a family of churches. And so the same kind of picture repeats itself. But whatever we do, we need to keep pursuing one another being together. In a moment, we're going to um, worship together. So I might invite the band up. Or the two, the two, the grand band. Um, but let me just read to you from Romans 12, 9 to 10. It says this. The marks of a true Christian is how it's titled in the, this is the ESV. It says, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with a brotherly or sisterly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. So for love to be genuine, it says love one another with affection. Are we loving one another with brotherly affection and sisterly affection? Outdo one another in showing honor. How can you do that this week? How could you 
uh, outdo one another by showing honor and love. It's a good challenge, isn't it? But hey, let's be a church that brings glory to God through the way that we remain in the vine together by truly loving one another. We want people to see us as they come in, maybe to visit on a Sunday, but also as we go out of these walls. But still, we are the church. We want people to see the glory of God through us. We want God to see the fruit, the health, the life of who he is through the way that the church is as he wants it to be, which is to be a people that love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And secondly, that we love one another. By this, people will know that we are his disciples and they will be drawn to him. Skip any of this. We can't go, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to devote myself to Jesus. I'm going to learn what it is to love God. And then I'm then going to take that and love my community. We can't miss that middle bit. We can't just go solo. We're called to be one body, a church. God is displayed through the church together. And we don't do it in our own strength, as I already mentioned. We do it as Christ has loved us. That's why we keep coming back to the love of Jesus. Keep reminding ourselves who he is, what he's done for us, and let that love flow through the vine, the sap running through the branches that we are to bear fruit for his glory. Amen. Shall we stand? We're going to sing to Jesus now. We're going to remind ourselves of his love.